This phylogenetic tree of animals presents the best supported hypothesis of the evolutionary relationships among major animal groups. It shows that the protostomes and another group, the deuterostomes, which includes us, share a common ancestor. The protostomes are, for a few reasons, the most successful group of animals on Earth. The protostomes and deuterostomes are characterized by bilateral symmetry. Hence, these animals are called bilaterians. A bilaterally symmetrical animal can be divided into mirror image halves by a single plane that passes through the midline of its body. Bilateral symmetry is characteristic of animals that have a distinct front end with a head concentrated with sensory and nervous tissues. With this arrangement, the head end typically precedes the rest of the body as the animal moves, allowing an animal to assess a new environment before entering. The protostomes and other bilaterians also distinguish themselves by the presence of three embryonic cell layers. That is, they are triploblastic, having ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Mesoderm is the new cell layer found in triploblasts. In these animals, mesoderm has developed into muscles and many other organs and organ systems, which provide their owners with numerous evolutionary advantages. Protostomes and deuterostomes are clades that have been diversifying separately for more than 500 million years, ever since the Cambrian explosion. The clades are distinguished in part by their early embryology. During gastrulation of these animals, a hollow ball that is one cell thick indents into a cup-shaped structure, forming a blastopore. In protostomes, which is Greek for mouth first, the mouth arises from the blastopore. In deuterostomes, which means mouth second, the blastopore becomes the anus, and the mouth forms later. Let's now focus on the protostomes. The protostomes themselves are extremely varied, but they all have a few features in common. They are bilaterally symmetrical animals whose bodies exhibit two major derived traits, an anterior brain that surrounds the entrance of the digestive tract, and a ventral nervous system consisting of paired or fused longitudinal nerve cords. Other aspects of the protostome body organization differ widely from group to group. However, the protostomes can be divided into two major clades, the Lafotrochozoans and the Ectisozoans, based largely on DNA sequence analysis. The precise placement of a small group, called arrowworms, within the protostomes is still in question. Of the two large groups, the Lafotrochozoans include animals that don't undergo molting during their growth, whereas the Ectisozoans do molt. Molting is the shedding of the body's external covering, the cuticle. Lafotrochozoans were grouped together based on similarities in genomic sequences. Many lineages, with the notable exception of mollusks, have a worm-like body form, which enables them to burrow efficiently through marine sediment or soil. The name Lafotrochozoan comes from two different ciliated features. One structure, called a lophophore, is a circular or U-shaped ring of ciliated, hollow tentacles around the mouth that is used for both food collection and gas exchange. The lophophore appears to have evolved independently at least twice, or else it's an ancestral feature of Lophotrochozoans and has been lost in many groups. The other notable structure of Lophotrochozoans is a free-living larval form known as a trochophore. Neither the lophophore nor the trochophore is universal to all Lophotrochozoans, however. Of Lophotrochozoans, annelids deserve mention because they have evolved a useful adaptation, segmentation. Each segment is separated by a septum that isolates it from the adjacent segment. Segmentation allows an animal to move different parts of its body independently, giving it much better control of its movement. The other major clade of protostomes, the ectisozoans, is characterized by having an external covering, or cuticle, that is secreted by the underlying epidermis, the outermost cell layer. The cuticle provides these animals with both protection and support. Once formed, however, the cuticle cannot grow. These animals increase in size by shedding, or molting the cuticle, and replacing it with a new larger one. This molting process gives the clade its name. In Greek, ekdesis means to get out of. A fossil Cambrian arthropod, preserved in the process of molting, shows that molting evolved more than 500 million years ago. An increasingly rich array of molecular and genetic evidence, 
including a set of Hox genes shared by all ectisozoans, suggests the ectisozoans have a single common ancestor. Thus, molting of a cuticle is a trait that may have evolved only once during animal evolution. In many ectisozoans that have worm-like bodies, the cuticle is relatively thin and flexible. It offers the animal some protection, but provides only modest body support. A thin cuticle allows the exchange of gases, minerals, and water across the body surface, but it restricts the animal to moist habitats. The cuticles of other ectisozoans, mainly arthropods, function as external skeletons, or exoskeletons. These exoskeletons are thickened by layers of protein and a strong, waterproof polysaccharide called chitin. Predation was a major selection pressure in evolution that favored the development of hard, external body coverings. Like annelids in the Lafotrochozoan clade, arthropod bodies are segmented. The segments typically differ strikingly from one another and bear specialized appendages. The appendages are manipulated by muscles, which are attached to the inside of the exoskeleton. Each segment has muscles that operate that segment and the appendages attached to it. The jointed appendages of arthropods give the clade its name from the Greek words arthron, which means joint, and podos, which means foot or limb. In this body plan of a crustacean, which is an arthropod, appendages have become specialized for sensing, holding food, walking and gathering food, and swimming. Jointed specialized appendages permit complex patterns of movement, including, in insects, the ability to fly. With flight, insects took advantage of new feeding and lifestyle opportunities. These opportunities, in turn, led to the unparalleled evolutionary success of insects.